What's going on guys? Jack Small Animation Station back into you all again with another video and today we are doing another theme month, Brawltober. A whole month dedicated to Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. And for today's video we're going to be doing a double reaction to two of the showcases. We're going to look at Spongebob and Sandy. Both of them in one video. Now. Here's how this month is going to work. I'm going to be giving you guys at least one upload a day for the first 10 days because I'm going to be reacting to all of these showcases as they come out. And then I have a bunch of other stuff. I'm going to obviously be doing first impressions of the game. I'm going to be filming myself playing the game, telling you guys my thoughts on the controls and characters and stuff like that. And then you're going to get two of these in one video per day. That's the 1st to the 10th. And then I'm going to be doing a review, first impressions when the game gets here, which is probably at the latest going to be the 8th. But I've heard that some people aren't getting it till November, so I really don't know. There's no ship date for mine yet. But, anywho, I'm going to stop nagging because it's time to... uh. See if they did uh, Sponge Boy justice, my Sponge Boy. Yeah, I know it's been a while since you've seen this plush, hasn't it? But he's gonna sit back there, and since this is a game of his, of course, I had to make sure to get something that only OG two thousands kids will know. Good old plug and plays. I actually have two of them. So, oh, by the way, I also have this whole background here of Spongebob. It's not complete yet, not even close. There's still a lot of stuff. Uh, Brawl will go up there with car racers and rehydrated once it gets here. Oh, oops. Sorry, it keeps doing that. But, anywho, I'm going to stop yapping because we got, we got two to go through today. And it's going to be at least a 10 minute video. Well, it's probably longer than 10 minutes now because I've rambled. So. Anyway, let's get Brawltober started, shall we? 3, 2, 1, let's go. Okay, it's 5 seconds. I won't complain. It's only 5 seconds. Here we go. Put myself down here. Let's see if they did my boy justice. What's he got? My name is Marcos Villalobos from the Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl development team. And today I'll share with you the Turn moveset the of our bro. employee of the month, SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay. SpongeBob is an all-rounder type character that is a jack of all traits, but a master of none. He's a great starter character for anyone new to the game. Or to okay, so new to the game. So he's pretty much the Mario Smash. This is pretty much Mario. The easy character that everyone can get into. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Platform fighters in general. Okay. Let's begin with SpongeBob's light attacks. Light attacks, okay. SpongeBob's light neutral is horizontal punch. Very simple. Okay. His light up is up kick. Ooh, that's a that's a Try fast kick. Holy. With this quick move. The combos, bro. Okay. Um, I made an error. Um, when I was watching the gameplay show, the game, just the standard gameplay showcase weeks back. Um, that's not a reference to, uh, I had an accident like I thought it was. It's just him with a dustpan and a little broom and sweeping the opponent. That's my fault. My bad. I thought that was a reference, but I failed. Oh, by the way, there is a reference, though, in the background. If you see that King Jellyfish and the Queen Jellyfish, um, that Queen Jellyfish was driven by Kevin, 
the uh, the pickle guy with his band of anchovies, and they did that to full to scare and fool SpongeBob, but then it backfires when the king shows up and destroys the robot, and it yeah it just goes all kinds of crazy. But yeah, that's a really nice Easter egg. I wonder what other, what other Easter eggs are in this. Onions off the edge. Oh, is that Gary? That's Gary down there. No, oh, I'm glad they put Gary in here. Can't have SpongeBob without his best friend. Well, his his pet, his pet best friend. Not you guys know what I mean. Also, one last thing for these, I'm gonna be trying to keep the swearing to a minimum to make these a bit more family friendly. But I'm not gonna say like this is made for kids for the COPPA thing you know just so, just so you guys know so I might say things like barnacles or fish paste or something like that instead of actually swearing so just a heads up just wanted to let you guys know I'm, I'm working on bettering my vocabulary Spongebob's light neutral air is split kick split kick nice his slide upper is aerial up kick the aerial up kick, same thing as the... And his light down air is... A big punch. Big punch. You can make some fun combos combining his downwards and upwards light attack variants. Bro! Slow down! His slight dash attack is... Spaz spin attack. Spin attack, okay. Now we have Spongebob's strong attacks. Fresh, out of the deep fryer. Spongebob's strong neutral is... Jellyfish swing. Jellyfish swing, yep, that that's fitting for him. His strong up is Karate Uppercut. Ah, uh, yep, I knew they threw the Karate in there somewhere. Um, and f I believe the first time he ever used this was in the episode Karate Choppers, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but I'm gonna double check my facts later, but... Yeah, that's really cool, I'm glad they gave him the Karate, and they actually, like, pronounced it as Karate. Because they know exactly who they're talking to. They're talking to the adult competitive gamers who are fans of Spongebob. I'm not competitive, but I'm a huge fan of Spongebob, so I'm going to point out every reference that I see. And his strong young is Imagination. <laughs> they gave him the Imagination meme from Idiot Box. <laughs> That's so cool. That is so cool. I'm so glad they gave him that. That is a really cool attack. I like that. Clap. I like that a lot, actually. Let's take a look at SpongeBob's air strong attacks. Nice combo. SpongeBob's strong neutral air is aerial, aerial jellyfish, jellyfish swing. swing. Yep, pretty basic, pretty Use simple. This while your opponent is recovering to secure a KO. Yep. <laughs> His strong upper is aerial karate. Aerial uppercut. karate uppercut. Okay. And his strong down air is Imagination Kick. Imagination Kick? I don't remember that being from the show. I think that's an original one. Secondary effect spiking your opponents with this effect is that they will probably stop wanting to play the game. <laughs> yep. Spongebob's strong dash attack is Run and Slip. Run and he runs slip. forward and then slips, dealing damage <laughs> where he falls. That's cool. The game is so fast, man. The I already love this. Spongebob's special attacks. And Coming we got the specials. Hacks. Oh, is that the hydrodynamic spatula? Oh, well, first he's got the bubble blow. If you use it too many consecutive times, you will start having more end lag, so don't overuse it. His up special is order up. Oh, it is. He flies upward spinning. Oh my god, I'm. S oh, that is so cool. I'm so glad they gave him that. I love the hydrodynamic spatula, and I wish it was in more episodes than just the pilot, because it's such a cool. One of the coolest things in Spongebob's arsenal. And I'm really glad they used that as his recovery move. Because it makes sense. Because if you guys remember the episode, Help Wanted, the pilot episode of the show. Um, he was using the hydrodynamic spatula to fly around the Krusty Krab. To fly over the giant wave of anchovies to get to the kitchen to make the, make the patties. So, yeah, it's really fitting they gave him that, and it really shows that they have done a lot of research, and I'm so happy they did a lot of research, because if they didn't, and this was just another low-effort cash-in from GameL, I would be a bit miffed, but 
This is Ludosity. They know what they're doing, and they're huge fans. I can tell. So yeah, that is cool. They are definitely catering to 90s fans of Spongebob. That is so cool. It's Hydrodynamic Spatula. Dylan Damage on the way. I love that that's his recovery. And his I love that. special is Chomp. Chomp? This attack can be charged up for a bigger bite. Huh. I don't remember ha Finally, him having that in the show. Is oh, wait. Oh, no, no. I do remember. He did have that in the show. It was in the, uh, the really bad season 2 episode, I'm with Stupid, where he chomped on on Patrick's hand when he was acting like a jerk. He was at when he was acting like a barnacle. <laughs> That's so cool. I'm so I'm really glad they are definitely catering to that early 2000s and 90s nostalgia. What's this taunt? <laughs> the mocking SpongeBob meme. I mean, I know I already saw this because of the gameplay showcase, but that's still a hilarious taunt. I love that. <laughs> I love that so much. Coney, why do you hate that? That's funny. <laughs> that's funny, and that's like the best taunt ever. <laughs> that's amazing, I love it. SpongeBob states is the jellyfish feels. Oh, spun hold on. SpongeBob's oh, sorry, hiccups. SpongeBob stage. Listen to that. He said SpongeBob's stage. That means that all these characters are gonna be having specific stages to one another. That is sick! I I love that, which means we're gonna get at least 20 to 22 stages. I mean, yes, I can obviously tell that this is Final Destination. One platform, one platform and one moving platform, but... It still looks cool, and the graphics, man, oh boy, that, that looks clean. I know people are gonna say Smash looks better, but no, in my opinion, this looks better, because it's more stylized, there's a lot more texture and animation. Whereas in Smash, it's a bit flat, and especially on the 3DS version of Smash, where they had that stupid black outline against around the character, which looked so dumb. But, yeah, I already, I already like this more than Ultimate. I'm sorry, guys. But I love this more than Ultimate already. This is a medium side stage with a single moving platform. And look, even Gary has come to join the fun. Gary. <laughs> and now, let's watch Spongebob show some karate moves in a real match. He's ready. He's ha. Huh. Ready? Three, two. Go back. What was that intro? Now let's watch SpongeBob was that Hans? show some karate moves in a real match. He's ready. Ready? Oh, dude, that is Hans. They all have intros. That's dope. I mean, I know there were intros in Smash as well, but the ones in Ultimate are not all that good. At least from what I can remember. It's been a while since I played Smash, but from what I can remember, the intros for Smash weren't all that good. So this is cool. I love this extra bit of detail. They use Hans to drop SpongeBob into the stage, and then he'll and then he goes like woohoo. I'm like, hold on, let me find it. Right there. <laughs> it looks a bit janky, but since it's supposed to be faster, I can understand why sometimes there's missing frames. And you won't really notice it unless you like slow it down to like 0.25 speed, which I'm not gonna do. But that's that is sick. That is sick. Jesus, the combos you can do with this guy. Holy Toledo. Not only is he a good starter, but he can do some nasty combos. Whoever's playing this Spongebob, whoever's playing Spongebob right now in the showcase, <laughs> is a pro player. <laughs> I love they actually gave him the little sound effect. Spongebob, what is it with you and Spikes? <laughs> Perfect. I also... What are... Hold on. One other thing I gotta point out about this game, um, I love that there's no, like, bubble when you fall off the- when you're off screen. Like, if you're off screen, you just immediately die. I love that. I love that so much, because it was so annoying in Smash to see that, because yes, while well, it gave you a second chance to try and save yourself, it was also really hard to figure out where the heck you were. So... 
yeah, that one... So yeah, I like that I don't have the stupid bubble on the outside. It's like, if you're off-screen, you're dead. Plain and simple. SpongeBob and his imagination kick is gonna be an absolute... Spiking nutty... <laughs> a nutty spike... In, like, tournaments. If this ends up going to something like Evo, I def can definitely see a lot of people using Spike as, like, the big finishing move. That is nuts. It's crazy. Oh, we got victory screens. SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh. <laughs> I love that. He's doing he's doing the happy dance. <laughs> and Patrick's losing animation. That is like that is amazing, dude. The My Pretty Seahorse reference with him nailing a board into his head. <laughs> that is amazing. I love that they did that. That is so cool. Thank you so much for tuning in to this character showcase. And please look forward for more like this in the future. Yeah, Spongebob, Spongebob's looking like a solid A-tier character. He can do a lot of combos, he's fast on his feet, and he's definitely going to be a very good starter character for those that want to get into the game. Alright, I'll be right, alright, so I'm going to go check something, then I'll be back, and we can do Sandy, so give me one sec. I'm back, sorry about that, I had to go check something, but yeah, we're still all good, and now we have Sandy's showcase, so let's jump in, shall we? Three, three, two, one, brawl. Let's see how they did the girl from Texas. Hey everybody, my name is Thaddeus Cruz from the Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl development team. And today, I'll show you the moveset of the Texan karate fighter and scientist, Sandy Cheeks. This is kind of cool. Sandy is a hyper aggressive brawler that likes to stick close to her. Okay, one thing I gotta say, um, why is Sandy's stage Glove World? That that is very very confusing. I don't remember her ever going to Glove World. I don't remember that in any of the show, and I've seen pretty much every single episode, including the really bad ones. So, if I'm missing something here, guys, let me know in the comments. But I already see, like, a lot of references, especially a lot to, like, Season 6 and Season 8. Because if you see up there, that's the Fiery Fist of Doom, that roller coaster. You look down there, it's a little hard to see, but there is, uh, there's Glovey Glove from that same episode. And then the Love Boat, that's a reference to when Spongebob and Pearl got stuck in the Love Boat on that, uh, FNAF-esque uh, episode. I forget what it was called. And then the Vite, that ship, even though it says the love boat, the ship swinging back and forth, it has Viking shields on it. You know what else? You know what episode had Vikings? Dear Vikings, from... It was either season 7 or season 6. It was one of those two. It was from season 6 to 6, 7, or 8. It was in that area, because I vividly remember that episode, even though it was a bit below average. But it's not that bad. I've seen a lot worse. But again, I mean, the Glow World stage looks great. I really like this. I really like the stage, but... Why Sandy? Why not have it as her tree dome or up on the surface in uh, in Texas itself or something? Or in Goolagoon. Goolagoon would have been a really cool stage for Sandy, but Glove World doesn't really fit. That just kind of that that kind of bothers me a bit. It's still a really nice stage, and I'm glad they put it in here. But I wish they used it for someone like Patrick. But you know what? It is what it is. I'm gonna stop complaining. And, keep at them and at we're just gonna see range. what she can do. Her specials allow her to cover a lot of ground to pursue opponents, or to quickly retreat when she's in a tough spot. I gave her her lasso. Thank you. Y'all better not take the name of Texas in vain. <laughs> <coughs> mm. Sorry. Mm. Um. The Texas in vain. He himself made a reference when in the episode Texas, where Patrick, <laughs> where um Patrick decided to say, well, "What's so great about dumb old Texas?" And then she comes back, gets off the bus, and is like, "What did you say? Don't you dare take the name of Texas in vain." <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm probably doing a terrible impression, but 
uh, yeah, that's really cool. I'm glad that even the develop the devs themselves are throwing in references in these showcases. That's really cool. Let's start this rodeo <laughs> with Sandy's light attacks. Sandy's oh, you can ride the roller coaster. I didn't even see that. Double cool. jab. Double the first jab. jab only deals damage, while the second does considerable knockback. Well, it does her do a light little up damage, is but... uppercut. And uppercut. her light down is tail sweep. Okay. Both sides. Use they didn't forget she had sure a tail. Which side your opponent will end up on. Let's talk about Sandy's air light attacks. Sandy's light neutral air <laughs> is two-way punch. You can combo this move into itself to keep sinking your opponents off the stage. Go Sandy's back. What was that combo? Sandy's light neutral air is two-way punch. You can combo this move into itself to keep sinking your opponents off the stage. Dang, that was Sandy's actually really cool. That's a good combo. Aerial uppercut. Aerial uppercut. Sandy's light down air is downward kick. All right, so they gave SpongeBob the karate, but where's hers? Sandy's light dash attack is acorn tackle. We had to include an acorn somewhere. One cannot talk about martial arts without mentioning There it Sandy's is. Okay, attacks. they gave her green, not purple, like they Sandy's did in strong modern neutral is that's, a nice, punch combo. that's a nice. That's She kicks forwards, then quickly rotates 360 degrees with a backhand fist. Sandy's strong up is punch kick tail combo. Sandy's strong down is karate. The way that you can tell, again, that this is catering to the t early 2000s and 90s kids is that she's using the green karate glove. Because in some of the modern episodes, she uses a pink or purple glove when she does her karate in the modern episodes, like season 10, 11, and 12. And the soon-to-be-complete 13, I believe. But I don't really know. I've kind of fallen out. Spongebob, I need to catch up. But I gotta, I gotta give you guys these bids, so that's gonna have to wait. But yeah, I'm glad they gave her the green gloves because even though the purple glove would have matched her, the flower on her uh, air helmet very well, the rest of it it would have looked a little weird. Because if you guys remember from that episode, I don't remember exactly what it was called, but it was one of the more modern episodes. It was post sequel. Um, she was in her. She was in the tree dome, she was in her bikini, and th and then she was wearing the pink gloves with that. Well, purple gloves with that, because it matched what she was wearing, and it looked a lot cooler. If they gave it to her here, it would have been a bit, a bit odd. But I'm glad they gave her the green, and Spongebob still has the red. So, yeah, this is definitely catering to my generation of Spongebob, and not the, not so much the newer generation. And yes, I did just make a probably good one and a half to two minute rant, two minute ramble talking about glove color. I'm a SpongeBob fan. That's what I do. Chop! This slower attack will turn opponents into mincemeat. Yeah, mincemeat. Let's go over Sandy's That's a karate chopper's reference. Sandy's strong neutral air is. Bicycle kick. Bicycle kick. The attack moves you forward in the air a bit, which makes it a good option when recovering. It's not really much Sandy's of a bicycle strong kick. up air is upward stomp. Upward Sandy's stomp? strong down air is tail spin. Tail spin. Launch your enemies upwards with this move, and then combo it with her strong up air upward stomp. Hmm. Nice. Sandy's strong dash is shell sandboard slide. Oh, cool! They gave her the uh, the sandboard. That's cool. I was not expecting them to give us that, cause she uses that. Well, there's a lot of episodes she used that, but I always remember it from my had an accident. And of course, in good old Battle for Bikini Bomb Rehydrated, where that was what she used on the slide levels. So, yeah, Sandy. They gave Sandy her. They gave Sandy the sand, the shell sandboard. That is such a nice detail. Nice attention to detail there, Ludacity. And now let's look at a curious mix of sci-fi technology and Texas rodeo with Sandy's special okay. attacks. Sandy's neutral special is 
the sheriff. Okay, they're calling the sheriff. She throws a lasso, lasso to catch and pull in That is definitely a Texas the Texan reference. way. This move is a great way of connecting those slower, stronger attacks she has. Sandy's nice. up special is Rocket Pack. She flies upwards with the jetpack, hitting opponents on her way. Execute the move a second time while flying to. Oh, good, they gave her the little jetpack. That's a Sandy's Rocket reference. For all these references, since I'm going to be using the editor to add in, like, the intro and stuff like that, and the jump cut editing, of course, um, I'm going to be putting pictures of these, of each reference that I see, so you guys can get, like, a visual, a visual of what I'm trying to talk about, so. Yeah, my, uh, editor me is going to have fun with that. Let's continue. Consecutive launches, sideways, or downwards. Sandy's down special is... Extendo Boots! Extendo Boots? Huh. I thought this was catering to 90s nostalgia. I mean, I know the Extendo Boots was from the episode Stuck on the Roof from Season 11. But I thought this was more catering towards the adult kids. I mean, adult. Not adult kids, but Adults. Competitive adult. The old competitive adults that grew up on the 90s and 2000s shows. Oh, look! Uh, Gary's in this stage, too. I didn't even notice that. That is cool. Uh, I was about to say that balloon on the bottom there. That balloon right there. Um, I was about to say it was from Free Balloon Day, but that was a red balloon, not a blue balloon. So, yeah, I, that's not a Life of Crime reference like I thought it was. My bad. <laughs> Hmm. I, I kind of wish that rock bottom was a stage. Maybe we'll get that. I hope so. That would be a really neat stage, but... Yeah, I'm glad they put uh, Gary in here as well. I wonder if Gary's going to be on the Patrick's stage, whatever Patrick's stage is going to be. She activates That's her so cool, though. I'm glad they put Patrick her height in. And punch upwards. Trigger the move again Wait, was that? to retract her boots while staying at the top. This even okay, makes it's it just an a interesting mix-up option when recovering. And finally, Sandy's taunts. What's she doing? Oh, she's spinning an acorn. Sandy's stage is... Glove World. This is a Again, that makes stage. no sense. Has him in the center, a middle Sandy platform, is not a... As well Sandy's as a never been to Glove World in the show from the last time I checked. Platforms. Be on the lookout for the occasional roller coaster cart. They'll hit like a truck. And okay, one thing I definitely gotta give Ludosity credit for here is that the entire roller coaster is the fiery fist of doom, and they actually got the the cart colors right from that episode. It was orange, uh, green with orange flames, and you can even see the fist of pain logo on the front if you look really, really close. They are doing- they are putting so much effort and detail into this game. Oh, and for those saying that the music sucks, uh, no, it does not. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. See, the thing- people are gonna say that Smash's music is better, because Smash uses already existing music, except maybe Battlefield and Final- and the Final Destination. But that's it. The rest of the stage is all based off certain stuff. All we all use already music that's already been made and used. Like, Green Hill Zone has the Green Hill Zone theme from Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, stuff like that. With this game, instead of just taking stuff from the, from the shows themselves, they're trying to get creative and make their own pieces of music. I don't get why people hate the music in this game. I really don't. I think the music's pretty good. Um, Yes, the carnival music is a bit... Eh, but Spongebob's big, uh, Jellyfish Fields theme, that one's dope. It's like, doo 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 It was, that, that one was so catchy. I'm sorry I didn't comment on that on Spongebob Showcase, but, yeah, the music's pretty good. I don't get why people hate it. I don't get it. Now, let's watch Sandy let's just watch show her, off her I'm gonna martial stop arts skills we're gonna watch in a her real fight. match. Play nice. Three, two, two one. Go. I love that there's an announcer too. That's a nice touch. Since there's no voice acting, but the voice acting doesn't really bother me. Jeez, the combos you can get off of her. Holy Toledo. 
we can get some good combos off of Sandy. Uh, she doesn't look as good as Spongebob, I'd say she's a solid B tier. But she still looks like a pretty good character, and people that main her, they, she can end up being dangerous. So. But this is going to be interesting, because I, if I remember correctly, when we get to her victory screen, we're going to see Spongebob's defeat screen, which is interesting. Okay, this is another thing I forgot to bring up on her, uh... <clears throat> This is another thing I forgot to bring up on Spongebob Showcase. Um, I love the defeat animation in this game, too, because the defeat animation in Smash is just a hand clap for everyone. And it's so, so freaking stupid. It's it's just a hand clap. That's all it is. But here, they're throwing in extra references, like Patrick nailing the board into his head, or what we're going to see from Spongebob, whatever it is. But, Yeah. Now, before you guys ask, I could not give a single crap about who the final Smash character is, because I don't play Ultimate. I don't. I just... It's not... It's, I just don't like it. I don't like Ultimate. I just think that it is lazy and boring, and that and the online sucks. So... Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be playing this, and not Ultimate. I could not care less about Ultimate, and I hope that Sponge... that Nintendo's, uh... Plan to sabotage it backfires and blows up in their face because it's about time Nintendo takes an L for being the greedy Barnacle heads that they are Okay, what's the victory screen? Uh, oh, there's Spongebob. She's crying <laughs> They get Spongebob crying animation for his defeat. That is very fitting for him. But Sandy's windscreen, I don't know. It, it looks weird. It may just be the angle. Like, hold on, let's go back a bit. Maybe. Thank you. Like, let's just, let's just watch the animation here. That animation looks weird. They have the, they have it so close to her face that you don't even see her flip. Like, it's so weird. Um, but yeah, Sandy is a solid B tier character. She's still gonna be good, but you'd have to be like a super, like a really good pro player to really make her like an S tier or a legitimate threat. And she does look like she's a little bit harder to master than SpongeBob, which I'll give them credit for, but SpongeBob looks a little bit more rewarding to master. That's just my opinion, and it might just be because that stage has so many platforms, it's so hard to really get combos in. Unlike final, unlike jellyfish fields where you where it's a flat, where it's just a flat area where you can easily get a ton of combos, but um, yeah, I think Sandy looks pretty good. Sandy looks pretty good, but SpongeBob is still the my favorite thus far from what I've seen. So yeah, that's gonna do it, guys. That's that is both of the showcases for today. This is probably double the length of both of these because of how much I had to ramble. Because I'm a SpongeBob fan, this is what I do. <laughs> and then tomorrow you'll be getting Patrick and Cat Dog. I'm really interested in Patrick. I don't. I'm really interested to see how he's gonna handle since he's gonna be a grappler. And from what I heard, with the those that play Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, the Broly players are probably going to be going to Patrick, and since Broly is one of my favorite characters to use in Fighters, even though I don't play it as much as I used to anymore, um, that's going to be interesting. So. And that was Sandy. Thank you all very much for tuning in to this character showcase, and please look forward to more like these in the future. Alright, that's gonna do it, guys. Um, thank you for watching this video. Um, apologies it's so long, and I'm sorry that I rambled so much, but... I'm just such a huge Spongebob fan that whenever I see a reference in anything, I always gotta point it out, because... I love Spongebob. I always will love Spongebob. He's always been one of my favorite shows, even in his darkest era. But, I still... I still really enjoy... I'm really enjoying All-Star Brawl from what I'm seeing, and I am so hyped to play. So, that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And there will be more Brawltober on the way very soon. So, until then, I'm Jack Small of Animation Station. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.
Peace. Oh, and also shout out to the station. Shout out to Station Squad. I'm out.